Hello, in this video, I'm gonna be working with the Best Arc BT650. This uh, plasma cutter sells for around $300 on Amazon. So go ahead and sit back while I give you guys a complete review and tutorial on how to work all of the different components on it, as well as what its capabilities are. Now, the manual says that this plasma cutter can cut 9 16 with a clean cut, and it can cut uh, 18 millimeters, which is roughly three quarters of a severing cut. So I'm gonna try to be as clean as I possibly can through both those cuts to see what it's really capable of. Um, I'm gonna cut some longer pieces, 12 inches up to like, I think one of them is like almost 20 inches. So that way you guys can really see if that uh, plasma cutter can handle longer cuts. I realize you guys might be trying to cut like a full sheet of metal or something like that. Um, but I don't have a full sheet of three quarter inch metal to see what it can really take. All right, I went ahead and set up a fence on this piece of 9 16 We're gonna go ahead and try to make a full cut. The duty cycle for this should be somewhere between 60%, meaning that I should be able to cut for six minutes out of every 10 minute time period. Well, that was my legit first time ever using the plasma cutter. So we just went ahead and threw this big old piece of metal on and cut it. So I'm actually pretty impressed. Um, one thing with plasma cutters is you typically have to go slower the thicker the piece of metal is. Um, even if you look in the manual, it'll give you uh, inches per minute. And as it gets thicker or the metal gets thicker, you have to go slower. So at the beginning here, when I got started, I was just trying to figure out what that inches per minute. It's not like you can meter out your hand or anything like that. So I'm kind of figuring out how fast or how, how fast I can go or how slow I need to go basically. By the end here, about halfway, I was able to hit that and I came out with a pretty clean cut for this thick of metal. So overall pretty good, but now it's time to increase that metal thickness and see what it can do. Okay, so three quarters inch. Uh, I'm actually really impressed here. This is actually a very thick cut. If you guys are cutting three quarters of an inch, you're probably doing something that would be more industrial uh, type application. You're working on buckets or you're doing some heavy plate work. Three quarters of an inch is like no joke, right? So this is about 12 inches long, if you can see it. Just by the, the swirl of the cut, I might have still been going a little bit too fast or potentially I needed to have a higher PSI for doing this one. But overall, very good. I did hit a snag over here. I think I just got a little bit too excited. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm almost done. But this is, this is a very clean cut, and I'll grab it here so you guys can kind of see how it looks. I mean, you can see a nice, nice squared off corner, nice clean cut. There's a little, obviously a little bit of dross. I feel like anytime you start getting into those, uh, that thicker metal, the dross is really uh, a lot thicker and a lot harder to get off. I haven't... Uh, I haven't let this thing cool down to see how hard it is to get off yet. But overall, I'm liking it. All right, that concludes the performance section of this video. What I'm gonna be doing now is I'm gonna go in to more of a tutorial style where I teach you guys how to use all the controls, I show you guys how to take the torch apart, I show you how to put it together, stuff like that. But as far as performance goes, I'm actually really impressed with this thing. I honestly hooked it up and thought it was just gonna like crap out on me out of nowhere. But it didn't. It actually made some really nice clean cuts. It was able to do some really thick metal. I never hit the, the duty cycle, not once on it, because it, I mean, I didn't do anything big enough, honestly. But I don't think I would ever have a problem, especially for something that you're using in your garage. Now, the big comparison, you probably would you know, want to compare this thing to like a hypertherm. And honestly, the price point is where it really comes up here. You can buy one of these for 300 bucks. While if you went and bought a comparable plasma cutter from a that was a hypertherm, you'd probably be spending something like $2,000 to $3,000. The only thing that the hypertherm has that maybe this one doesn't have is just history. We know that a hypertherm can run for five to 10 years and doesn't ever seem to have a problem. While these are so new, we don't, we don't know that. So if you have one of these and you've been running it for a long time, please drop me a comment. Let me know how long you've had it. If you still like it, if you've had any problems with it, maybe if you've dealt with the, the uh, customer service or something like that, please let me know. But let's move into some tutorials. All right, let's start off by talking about hooking up our electrical. So the plasma cutter itself comes with a 220 volt plug, okay? So you can plug this thing right into 220 volts or you can use your adapter to plug into 120 volts. The big difference is at 220 volts, it's able to be a 65 amp machine, 
but if you go to the 110 volts, it's gonna be a 40 amp machine. It can still cut through most of the stuff you probably would ever need it to, so if you are just using this in your uh, garage, you'd probably be just fine with running at 110 volts. But you do have the option, you could bump up to a bigger voltage and you're able to cut some thicker metal. Now, the air, if you have just a regular air hose and a compressor, you can go ahead and plug right into the back of this machine. It already has all of the air fittings installed onto the machine, super nice, super easy. Let's go ahead and move around to the front. After running this machine for a little bit, I've learned some stuff about these front connections. One, off to the, the very first one you have here is just gonna be your primary air going to your torch. This one uh, does have wrench flats, but it's also plastic, so I probably wouldn't get too wild with this one. Um, when I've used it, I just took it, screwed it in, and snugged it up by hand, and it was able to, it never leaked, it didn't have any problems. Next you have your trigger or your control wire. This is just basically two wires that run the actual clicker, the, the actual trigger button, right? All you do is put it in, spin it a little bit till it lines up, and then it just has a locking nut on the outside. Lastly, for the torch, we have our connection for the power. We know that this one, this red wire here is the power because the other one's the ground, and then you, that's how you get both parts of your electrical. So this one, just put it on there, make sure it's nice and tight, you don't want it to be arcing or anything like that. And then finally, we have our ground clamp, or earth clamp as they call it. Go ahead, put, just, you put it in, it's gonna line up with a keyway, as soon as you get in that keyway, you just twist it. Super easy, and basically at that point, you just need to uh, charge up your compressor with air, and you're ready to start cutting. All right, let's go over this control panel. I do wanna point out, I really like this control panel. Though one of the drawbacks might be is if you were to get a bunch of spatter or grind, like the grind spray, it could damage this and it could, you know, in the future be hard to read. Otherwise, I really like it. Super clear, super easy to read. Um, we'll go ahead in here and start on the left side and then we'll just go and move to the right side. So over here, top left, you're going to have two different settings. You're going to have a cut setting or an air setting. Now the cut setting would be if you were going to make a cut while the air setting just turns on the air pushing it out of our actual torch. Nothing too crazy there. I would guess that's for something maybe you were gonna clean it out or you wanted to make sure you were getting proper air or something like that. Um, more of a utility thing, less of a like a work type deal. Now, moving down, we have our plate and our mesh. So these are the only two settings. You will sometimes find plasma cutters that have like a gouge setting or something like that. This one just has plate and mesh. Um, so plates, obviously I'm gonna cut a piece of plate. I'm gonna make a long cut. Uh, so I'm gonna have it on the plate setting. While well, when you press the mesh, you're gonna see this little mesh symbol show up right here. Mesh would be if I was gonna cut expanded metal or something like that. Why would you want a mesh setting? Well, mesh setting, mesh setting is actually pretty cool. It's able to cut continuously across mesh, meaning that the actual arc will never turn off. It just really simplifies cutting mesh instead of having to constantly click on and off or even have to wait for that torch to cool down in between, it just stays on the whole time and you can make a nice clear cut. Now over here is an adjustment knob for our PA and our PT. So the PA stands for pre-arc and the PT stands for post time. Now the PA is gonna be, I can have my pre-arc, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the trigger. It's not making contact with the metal before I, make or before I touch the metal and start cutting. It's kind of a cool thing so that you don't have to be right on the metal, but you can adjust how long this is up to 15 seconds. Now the PT, you can again adjust up to 15 seconds, and this is the post time flow. So that's how much longer after you're done making a cut that the air will continue coming out of our torch. The reason you wanna have this is so that it can cool down the torch and doesn't cause any problems. So it's kind of anywhere between you know five to 10. The pre-torch, the pre or I'm sorry, pre-arc would just be if you want it you know, you could have five seconds. I don't think you'd have much time where you'd wanna have 15 seconds, but having that will definitely help you start cuts. Now, up on the top right, sorry, I got a little bit out of order here. The 2T and the 4T. So a 2T setting would be if I wanted to click on the torch, it's gonna to run. When I release that torch or release that button, the torch will turn off. Now the 4T, 4T is I'm gonna press, I'm gonna click the button on the torch. It's going to turn on the torch and then I can, I can release that button, but it's still gonna run until I click it again. The reason you would use a 4T would be if I was gonna make a really long cut and I didn't wanna have to hold that torch the whole time, 
or maybe um, I'm gonna get in an opposition where I can't really push that trigger the whole time. Um, but most of the time you're gonna run it in the 2T where you're gonna just, when you pull the trigger in, it's gonna run, it's gonna work, okay? Now, over on the bottom here, on bottom right, we have our amperage adjustment. So there is a, a little sheet inside the manual. We'll go over different thicknesses of metal and what amps you might run that at. Um, if you're like me, most of the time you're gonna run it in the upper end anyway. So I always, most of the time I just leave it in like at like 65 amps and it seems to cut just fine. Though that will change the um, size of your cut, especially if you're running on much smaller metal. So if I'm cutting sheet metal and I'm running at 60 amps, I'm gonna have a much wider kerf, but typically that's not something I worry too much about. You can, you know, you can bring it down if you're gonna be cutting sheet metal, while if you're gonna be cutting stuff really thick, you wanna be up in that 65 range. Now finally, we have our flow adjustment for our air pressure. Crank this thing up or down, just like that. It takes a little bit, it's quite a, quite a lot of turns to get it to change. Now, you notice that there's a red zone over here on this side, and if you go too high, you're gonna have a red zone up here, and I believe it'll create two bars. I, don't, I might only have 75 PSI coming to this thing right now. But if it's in the red zone like now, right now, it has too much PSI, and if it's down here all the way to the left, it would be too little PSI to be running. So you wanna to try to put it in that green zone. Let's see if we can get back into there. Come on, there we go. So somewhere, I personally would be on the upper end of the green zone just so you know you're, you've got enough PSI to do what you're gonna do. So that encompasses all of the controls. Let's go ahead and move on to the torch. I really like this torch. The torch uh, has this really cool uh, wire frame over here. Makes it so I have the perfect distance for the metal as I'm cutting. I can also use it to push it against a fence or something like that, and it slides pretty nicely. I also like on the torch, it has this universal joint. I feel like it's gonna make uh, the wire connections not break very often. It's just gonna be a nice setup. Let's go ahead and move on to disassembly. The torch is pretty easy to disassemble. All you need to do is you take this and it's just a hand tight nozzle here. Um, these are ceramic. I would assume that you would want to have extras of these. If you probably dropped it really hard, they would break. Next, you have your actual nozzle. This one was just a snug tight. It's by hand, snug tight kind of thing. This is a consumable, you will go through these. And then lastly, we have our electrode, which will have wrench flats. Let's see if I can get on them. And you just take that, spin it, and you're done. So these two, you're probably gonna need to replace quite a bit, um, especially because they just get dirty and they just get beat up. Um, they do have different sizes of nozzles, or I'm sorry, of, of electrodes if you look, but honestly, this size seems to be do everything that I need it to do. So something to think about. Put this thing back together, it's just the exact opposite. All right, that concludes the video. If you guys found this helpful at all, whether you're in for the buying process, whether you own one already and you just couldn't figure out how to do something, uh, please drop me a comment, hit the like button. It would just go a long way to helping my channel. Otherwise, hope you guys have a great day.